Okay, so welcome to part two of uh, this video on the negative binomial distribution. And uh, in the first part of the video, uh, in the first part of the discussion, sorry, in the first video, uh, we showed that uh, we could define these random variables x, i uh, on our probability space, uh, and that all of them were identically distributed. Uh, it turns out that these are also independent, so they are independent and identically distributed, i, i, d. So we have r, uh, independent, identically distributed geometric. Uh, geometric um, distribution. So that's the way of viewing the negative binomial distribution, that it is R, I independent, identically distributed geometric distributions. Okay, it was the sum of R, I, I, D, uh, ge geometric distributions uh, with parameter P. Okay, uh, and the reason they're independent intuitively, it's because uh, the number of uh, the number of um, number of tails between uh, your uh, well, the number of tails preceding your first head and the, does not affect the number of tails uh, between the first and second head. They are completely independent. Um, and that, uh, so uh, that, that uh, intuitive concept of independence is what is mirrored in the, um, the, um, the formal uh, definition of independence. So um, that intuition is good enough for us at the moment. Okay, uh, so... Uh, now what we want to do is work out the probability uh, mass function. So we want to work out the probability that x is equal to i. Uh, well, that's the probability that the sum of all of these is equal to i. Uh, so it's equal to the probability that x1 uh, plus x2 uh, plus dot, uh, dot, 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 all the way up to xr is equal to i. Okay, uh, so what you can think about is we have i... Uh, we have I1s. Think about it like this. We have I1s, uh, which we want to uh, somehow... And what we... Uh, so if I list them all out, I'll list a few more around. Um, and basically, what I want to do is I want to... Um, I want to somehow... I want to look at all the ways in which uh, I can distribute these 1s to x1, x2, x3. The problem, you see, is that um, if we... If we sum this up to i, how do we know that this one isn't i and these ones aren't zero? That's a possibility. Uh, in addition, we could have this one being i and all the others being zero, or we could have this one being i minus one, this one being one. So we need to take account of all of these possibilities. So what we need to know is how many different ways are there to split these i ones amongst these r x's. Uh, so if you think about the x's representing barriers, we're going to put barriers in like this. Uh, to split them off, and we're going to say these are the ones ascribed to x1, these are the ones ascribed to x2, these are the ones ascribed to x3, these are the ones ascribed to x4, etc., all the way down to xn, then how many barriers are we going to have to put in? We're going to have to put r minus 1, sorry, all the way down to xr rather than xn, I said. Uh, so we're going to have to put r minus 1 barriers in. So what we want to know is how many different ways are there of assigning these barriers in this way? Well, uh, we can think about it as just, uh, let's say these are orange, orange, oranges, and these are apples, and we want to know, so this is an orange, this is an orange, uh, let's say this is an apple, uh, in the shape of a love heart. Uh, this, uh, let me put that in there to make it look more like an apple. Orange, apple, and we want to know how many different permutations of, uh, of I, ap of I oranges, and R minus one apples are there. Uh, well, uh, if you think about it, there are r minus 1 plus i positions. All you need to tell me is where the oranges go, sorry, where the apples go, or you could tell me where the oranges go, and then where all the apples go is, uh, sorry, where, where all the oranges go is set. So just tell me where the apples go. Well, the first apple, there are, there is, um, there is i uh, plus r minus 1 places that could go. Then, uh, for the second apple, there is i plus r minus 1 minus 1 places that can go and we'll go on until we've done until we've placed all r minus 1 apples so we'll go down to i plus r uh, minus 1 minus uh, you'll have r minus 1 minus 1 uh, which is confusing uh, but there you go uh, we'll go all the way down to that and that's the number of uh, ways that you could uh, place the um, the um, r minus 1 apples but that will count all the apples separately so it will distinguish between the different apples so we want to get rid of that so we want to divide by r factorial uh, I don't know what that's doing there 
are factorial, and that uh, will give us the number of ways of positioning the apples where the order of the individual apples uh, does not matter because the order because the apples uh, are indistinguishable. Uh, so the number of permutations of that becomes i plus r minus one choose r. So that that sum uh, that great big term there is equal to i plus r minus one over r um, choose r rather because you get the r factorial from the um, r here and this bit is i plus r minus 1 factorial divided by i plus r minus 1 minus r factorial okay oh sorry no it should be um, the words r apples there are r minus 1 apples so we should have divided by r minus 1 factorial and this would be r minus 1 there okay uh, so that's what uh, this is that is so this represents the number of ways of splitting up the um, the i uh, the i um, ones amongst the r x's. Uh, so uh, it's the number of ways that you can make i uh, from these x's. Okay. So um, this probability is going to be uh, the probability of each of these individual ways that you can split the i up amongst the uh, amongst the r's. Uh, so okay. So. We want the probability that x1 plus x2 plus all the way down to plus xr is equal to some i. We know that the number of ways to split the i amongst these rx's, so for instance, this x might have 2, this x might have 3, we, they all have to add up to i. The number of ways of splitting i things amongst these r, so sh how many ways are there of effectively sharing it out? So imagine you've got r children and you've got i biscuits and you want to uh, give the biscuits out to the children. Well, you could give all the biscuits to one child and no biscuits to any of the other children, uh, but there are loads and loads of different possibilities of, of how you can do it. The only thing that you can't do is you can't split the biscuits in half. You uh, you have to keep the biscuits as one whole biscuit. So the problem is how many different ways are there of splitting the biscuits am amongst the children? Um, and there are some really unfair ways of doing it, and there are some really more fair ways of doing it. Um, so all of the, the total number of ways of doing that, however, is i plus r minus one. Choose r minus one, basically. Um, okay. Um, so if we want the probability of this equaling one, then we could take any one of these ways of um, sharing them out, and we could say. Uh, take this specific way of sharing them out. So uh, imagine that all of these have specific values. We want the probability uh, that that is um, that that uh, that that actually happens. Uh, so uh, we we'll, we we want the probability that um, all of these values take on a specific thing. And then we use the fact that they are independent because this is asking, uh, so let's just say xr. So what we've said is we've taken a specific way of sharing out these um, these i biscuits among these r children. We take a specific way and we want to find the probability that that actually happens. And because they are ind uh, independent uh, random variables, this is going to be equal to the probability that x1 is equal to that specific value. So in this case, I've written 2. The probability that x2 is equal to 3, uh, all the way down to times the probability that xr uh, is equal to 4. Uh, and um, we want to find what that probability is.